much. And uh, of course, I start with the more or less canonical thanks to the organizers. Uh, uh, I am very much grateful to be able to be here and uh, to be able to give a talk here. It's a pleasure. And uh, we all say that, but for me, it was a particular pleasure because uh, here I met people with so many branches of mathematics. So many of you work heavily in differential geometry. I come from the more from the uh, integral uh, integral the system theory. Uh, so uh, it was a pleasure to listen to all your talks. I didn't, I couldn't follow all of them uh, really, but I listened to all of them and I enjoyed them. Uh, but also when talking to many of you, I realized that uh, maybe I should expand a little bit my talk by some basic, basic stuff. And then the talk has become 53 slides long. So we will see how, how long I will manage. They say that the idea talk uh, lasts for 60 minutes and is constructed as follows. 15 minutes, for first 15 minutes, everybody is supposed to understand. The next 15 minutes, some more close to the discipline should understand it. The, the third quarter should be understood at least by the speaker. And the last quarter, even the speaker does not have to understand. Luckily, my talk lasts only 45 minutes, but still you may, you may discover that there are things that I do not really follow myself. Uh, what I'm going to tell you is uh, a broad range of results that I obtained together with uh, a couple of other persons, mainly these persons, but not only, but mainly these persons, Maciej Błaszak, Siemowi Domański, Błażej Szablikowski from Poznan University, and Artur Sigiej from Opawa. And uh, these results were presented in a series of papers. Uh, I just tell you a few things here. Uh, does it work? Stop working. I don't see it. Oh. Okay. It's here. Where is it? Where is it? Disappeared. So, okay. Anyway, I'm saying which, which is oh, this one? I don't see it. Anymore. Oh, here it is. Ah, I know it's it. Okay, so um, in like 2017, we have introduced the notions of called quasi steckel systems. I will speak about them for a moment. Uh, this is a, based on the concept of Maritim, but we have somehow reformulated this concept. Then in this paper, we learned how to per perturb uh, steckel systems, geodesic steckel systems to so-called Frobenius integrable systems. Then we developed the theory of generalized to the, to the systems that are non, non uh, geodesic with, uh, with uh, potentials. Uh, then we found the lax mono, isomonomic lax representations, thus, thus proving that our deformed systems are of pain level type. This is why the title contains the notion of pain level systems. We also quantize them in a, a paper that is coming up soon. Uh, and this is a part devoted to going farther to solitons. I will not speak mu much about solid and pure and, and uh, integrable PDEs. 95% of my talk, or probably 100, <laughs> depending on, will be about finite dimensional integrable systems, uh, the subject of this conference. And I will go at the beginning, I will go slowly. So uh, uh, maybe everyone knows that, but I anyway want to say what a Poisson manifold is simply to fix the notation. So our manifold will be M, the Poisson structure will be pi. And pi, a Poisson structure is a, a Poisson manifold is a manifold uh, with equipped with a Poisson bivector, which is a two zero tensor with two indices up that is anti-symmetric and such that the corresponding bilinear mapping satisfies the Jacobi identity. This is a generalization of the concept many of you use, namely a symplectic form. So if you invert, if, if pi is not degenerated, if, if you invert it, you get a symplectic form, which is closed and, and so on. Uh, there is a very well-known theorem Darbu, not the Darbu theorem that we had we have seen on the uh, on the first talk of today. The other the other Darbu theorem it says that if you have a Poisson operator in a manifold, that is this two zero tensor that satisfies this Jacobi identity and anti-symmetric, then uh, you can always locally in a neighborhood of uh, uh, any point, find so-called Darbu coordinates in which the operator attains a, a very nice form that is called a canonical form. And the variables Z here are called in literature Casimir coordinates. Probably all, many of us know about this. 
And what is a Hamiltonian system from the point of view of Poisson structure on the manifold? It's simply a vector field that originates as a product or as, as action of a Poisson operator pi on the gradient of the function h on the manifold. So gradient is a covector at each point. And two zero vector lifts this covector to a vector. If you do it at each point of the manifold, you get a vector field, which is called the Hamiltonian vector field. So if vector field x at this form, then it's called the Hamiltonian vector field. And the corresponding system of all these is called the Hamiltonian system on M. And in Darboux coordinates, in the coordinates that, uh, in which Hamiltonian uh, uh, Poisson operator, which is also called Hamiltonian operator sometimes, has this form, uh, of course, uh, the Hamiltonian vector field has this exactly this form. Lambda i is then called positions in each other, and ui is called momenta. But on the general level, there is no need to distinguish between positions and momenta in, in Hamiltonian equations. So it's uh, only if you speak about Hamilton, uh, only if you consider their canonical form, so to say. Uh, we also speak about two types uh, of integrability, Liouville integrability and Frobenius integrability. So forgetting for a moment anything about Poisson structure, consider a, a set of N non-autonomous systems on the manifold. Uh, they do not have to be, uh, this N does not have to be uh, uh, related to dimension of manifold now for the moment. So we can, cons uh, we can easily see that it has a common multi-time solution through each point, that is at least uh, this integrable submanifold. If and only if this uh, uh, mixed derivative is equal, which leads you to the following condition, which is called compatibility condition of the system, the zero curvature condition. It's always it's sometimes called, sometimes people call it Frobenius condition. I will call it Frobenius integrability condition. So if such a system has, if these vector fields satisfy this relation, we will say that this system is Frobenius integrable. And in a sense, there is no idea of speaking of systems that are not Frobenius integrable. Okay, you can take such a system of, of uh, n ODEs on a, or, on a manifold, each ODE is of course a vector field on a manifold, but unless they satisfy this uh, condition, there is no common solution. So of course you can put them together, but they have nothing in common. Nothing in common. But if they do satisfy this condition, they have a common solutions, multi-time solutions. So this is about systems that explicitly depend on time, non-autonomous systems. And in case when these vector fields do not depend explicitly on time, this Frobenius condition simply degenerates or falls to the classical uh, condition, um, involutivity condition of the, of the distribution generated by Weiss. So we, we then get classical Lubin integrable system. And some more, uh, in, and in case when our system of, uh, non-autonomous vector fields YR is a system of Hamiltonian vector field, if they are all Hamiltonian with respect to the same Hamiltonian operator or Poisson operator with different HRs, of course, then this Frobenius condition is equivalent to this condition. So, um, now, a word about separable systems. I didn't have these slides. I, many of these slides were put after, as I tell you, after I discussed things with many of you. So maybe, it will be easier for some of you to follow all this. It's a very classical stuff. And yet uh, not, not many people see it at this generality, at this general level. So uh, uh, suppose that we have a Poisson manifold uh, and that the Poisson, mani uh, Poisson operator is non-degenerated, dimension of M is 2n. Two, two and suppose that we have a system of Darbu coordinates, uh, say almost global on this manifold mu1 up to mu n and lambda1 up to lambda n. And suppose that we, and let us write n basically arbitrary functions, phi i, uh, such that function fi, fi depends on, on lambda i mu i only and a set of n parameters. If you consider such a system of relations, they are called in literature separation relations, then under some, if you are lucky, you can algebraically solve this system with respect to these uh, uh, parameters a1 to a n. So if you solve it, we will, on the right hand side, we will get some functions of lambdas and mu's. And it's an easy proof, easy, easy thing to, to see that uh, as soon as phi i commute in a Poisson sense, and they do because phi 1 depends only on lambda 1 and mu 1, 
phi 2 depends on lambda 2 and mu 2 and so on. So they automatically commute in the sense of Poisson for each values of, for all values of parameters a. Then all, this is, should be small a, small, all small h commute in the sense of Poisson uh, bracket, which means that they constitute a Leuven integrable system. And uh, uh, written directly in, in uh, coordinates. So this is how it is done in general. All, all separable systems have this form. And all systems in literature that we saw at least have uh, this form with some very particular cho choice of this general separation relation. I would say that you can go even farther. I don't think it's, I have seen that. What you really need, you don't even need that uh, phi one depends on lambda one and mu one and so on. What you really need is that phi i and phi j commute for all values of a. But of course, uh, this definitely happens when phi i, phi one depends on lambda one mu one, phi three depends on lambda three mu three, and so on. In, if this happens, if phi one commutes with phi two, phi two, and so on, and if you solve this system with respect to the parameters, then uh, this h will uh, Poisson commute. And the proof is very simple. I will not go through it. It's just one 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 differentiation. So what you only have to assume is that this matrix is invertible. So it's immediate. You see it immediately. So this is a machinery for creating a huge, vast family of Lubin integrable and separate directly in separation coding, directly in separation coding. All the systems, classical separable systems that we have seen are some subclasses of this general construction. Now, uh, I didn't plan to show it either, but uh, just to help you to remember how it works then, what does it mean that they are separable? It means that when we have these uh, separation relations and each mu i will be, um, will be uh, replaced by dw, the i should, shouldn't be here, the w by d lambda i, where w is some function of, of uh, la all lambdas and a's, uh, then, uh, then uh, if you now solve each of these separation relations with mu i's replaced by dw i's over d lambda i's. And if we add them together, what we get is a complete integral, but complete integral of all Hamilton Jacobi equations for each of the Hamiltonians h i defined through this construction. So, in uh, what, you, what will happen is that uh, the obtained complete integral. Uh, will be a gener uh, generating function for a canonical transformation that linearizes all the flows of this Hamiltonian's HI at the same time. This is basically a, a, a content of Jacobi theorem, one way of formulating that. So now to our stecker system. So as you see, generally you can work in any, and I encourage to do, you to do so. There's plenty of, of work that is unexplored. There's really so many relations, particular type of relations you can work with to get some interesting things. Uh, but we will today concentrate on the so-called Stecker systems. So this is our relations, but all phi i are the same. So why to bother and write, write them like this n times? We can simply write a curve on lambda mu plane. And we say that we take n copies of this curve at points lambda one mu one, lambda two, and so on. And that's in, that, in that case, we arrive at the system of n equations that we can solve with respect to parameters. So what curve do we take? We take today, we take this curve. And this is a classical Stecker system, a little bit specified. Let me describe you now the ingredients. These are HRs, these are AR. We will solve this system with respect to these uh, uh, functions hr. So once again, what do we do? We replace each x, uh, each x by lambda one and each y by lambda by by mu one, and then x replace we replace x by uh, by uh, lambda two and y by mu two and so on. We do it n times. We get a system when equation linear in these guys hr. And we solve it with respect to Kramer. What you get, you get this system. So now let us take a look at the, this is linear. This system is linear with respect to HRs. And what is also important here is that the powers of X uh, go from N minus one to zero, one after one. Uh, that means that we get something that is called Stecker systems of tenancy type. 
If this is an arbitrary polynomial, this is just a Steckel system of any type, no identity type. But we co uh, concentrate on our uh, considerations to Steckel systems of identity type. So what we here see here, here is the uh, sum of monomials multiplied by some constant C alpha, where alpha depends on, uh, belongs to some finite subset of Z. B, uh, here is, uh, here we see monomials, but linear in Y. That will lead to, so these terms will lead to terms linear in momenta after solution, after solving, after solving this uh, curve with respect to Hamiltonians. This thing will lead, lead, uh, lead, uh, lead to a geodesic part, and this thing leads to a potential part. So these are scalar potential, these are magnetic potential. You asked me yesterday, yesterday if we could have um, magnetic potential in this construction. So you, you put them very easily by considering terms linear dependent on Y. Yeah. And uh, I will specify these sets. These are finite subsets of Z uh, and uh, uh, I mean, finite subsets of, of integers. I will specify them later. The parameter M here, uh, Vladimir, we, we spoke about F of X here, but now I specify F to be just a monomial for simplicity. Um, uh, this M will play an important role because uh, for M between zero and N plus one, this metric here that originates here is of constant curvature. Otherwise it's non, of non, non constant curvature and we cannot do our constructions. So this is a Steck, we obtain a Stecker system for Benetti type. G will be a contravariant that is two zero tensor, which we consider being a metric on Q. M will be a, a cotangent bundle of Q. This KR will be one one killing tensors of G, G, no matter what M is, one one killing tensors of G with K1 equals to identity. So this is the structure of Stecker Hamiltonians. Geodesic part, scalar separable potentials, and the uh, magnetic separable potentials. So these are, note that these are vectors. These are scalars, but these are vectors. And D gamma and C alpha so far are just constants. This is a Stecker system, a quite broad class of systems. Uh, okay, this is once again the same information about uh, the, those, this was put earlier. So I repeat again, this construction yields you directly a separable system, a classical sense of Hamilton Jacobi theory. So, so everything works here. Uh, there exists a complete integral that is a sum of such functions depending on one variable only, uh, which means that the new Hamilton Jacobi equation splits into n order of all these separation relations with uh, mu's replaced by dwr over uh, dwi over d, d mu. And uh, the corresponding canonical transformation generated by this w, this complete integral, linearizes the flow of all sticker systems. This is the construction, classical thing. What is the geometry we have here? Well, you are already realized that these guys hi are n quadratic in momenta mu Hamiltonians on the phase space m equals to t star q cotangent to the Riemannian manifold q. Lambdas are coordinates on q and mu's are coordinates in the fibers. So g is our contravariant metric on q. Again, it's flat between zero and n. It has a constant curvature for m equals to n plus one. Otherwise, for m smaller than zero, or larger than n, n plus one, it is of non-constant curvature, and we do not consider this case. Ki's are one one killing tensors on Q for the metric G for any n. Then we will also use the notion of uh, the two zero counterparts, Ki times G is a two zero tensors. They will be, we will use this notion. And uh, in lambda variables, in separation coordinates, lambda we call separation coordinates, this G and Ki and all, all stuff, it has a very concrete, very precise and very nice form. Uh, it's here. As you see, the metric is diagonal. Uh, the killing tensors are diagonal. This is, for example, the form of uh, basic separable potentials, VR, uh, VR alpha in our coordinates. Well, now what's, what's what here? So again, in this, we have seen these Hamiltonians, a, a number of uh, geometric objects. Take a look at them. No, too much, too much. We see a metric, killing tensor. We see a magnetic potential. We have scalar, scalar potentials, separable in the lambda coordinates. So this is how they look like. And deltas are these products. So delta one is uh, 
product lambda one minus lambda two, lambda one minus lambda three, and so on up to lambda one minus lambda, lambda n. Rho r are way signed symmetric polynomials. So they are basically symmetric polynomials in lambda, basic symmetric polynomials in lambda with signs plus or minus uh, alternating. So for example, rho one is minus, and in parentheses, lambda one plus lambda two plus blah, 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 plus lambda n. And ram, uh, rho n is minus one to n times the product of all lambdas, and then everything in between. Okay, uh, so lambda are orthogonal to the metric G. The G is uh, orthogonal in its coordinates. So these are the coordinates in which the Stecker system has been born. Uh, moreover, you can see this metric G can be obtained from the basic metric G0 with the, with the help of the power of a special conformality in tensor that also Professor Bolshinov sp spoke about on the first, on the first uh, lecture of this conference. Because this is a, a, an example of a, a, a tensor with one one tensor with a, a vanishing mean and torsion. So this is a mean hoist tensor. And all the Kidding tensors KR are simply can be get from the characteristic equation of, of this tensor. And this is an explicit formula, formula for, for clean tensor. And this is valid in any coordinate system because you can write down rows, which are functions of lambdas in any coordinate system. So this is this is actually a, a um, invariant formula for how these killing tensors look like. Okay, some more information. I don't want to bore you with all the details, but uh, I told you already that the, the metric is flat between zero and uh, and uh, n. And uh, of course, uh, uh, of course, the curvature for n plus one. So there's a little bit mistakes. The map to flat co coordinates has been found in many particular cases. Uh, the, this same metric G appears in the theory of local Hamiltonian structure for systems of hydronic type. We can take a look at papers of Pontov and Pavlov and Bokov and the reference there. And uh, more general separable metrics can be obtained from GV as so-called K-hole deformations of an empty system. And also, uh, I would like to mention that the, the results of Buchtaber and Mikhailov. Professor Mikhailov is here. Uh, I was with I had the pleasure to listen to his talk in Chile when he showed that uh, uh, this Stecker systems of Bennett type can, in general, can be put into into uh, into a polynomial form in so-called Newton coordinates. Uh, so we wrote a paper with my students in Rwanda uh, in some project uh, that we showed this in a very elementary way, coming through so-called Gitte coordinates. Anyway, another thing that one could know about stickers they are in fact n plus one hamiltonian after uh, after you somehow expand them to a little bit bigger phase space so if you take a look at this curve now maybe you a little bit acquainted with looking at uh, separable systems as curves on, on, on lambda mu plane this is our benenti uh, polynomial so to say benenti part this is basically a metric part. Note that instead of lambda 2m, I reuse here f of lambda, but it doesn't matter really. This is a Laurent polynomial in lambda, not just a or maybe polynomial in lambda. It doesn't matter. The information here is that uh, we, are, we just proved it, but we, we didn't have time to write the publication yet. <coughs> Artur Sergeyev, Maciej Boschek, and myself. We have proved that with the help of so-called finite dimensional neural maps, you can show that if you add some dimensions here, if you add some parameters to the curve and you do the same business, you solve this curve with respect to these Hamiltonians, they will indeed be n plus one. Uh, you will get a system of parameter dependent Stecker systems. Yes, that is indeed n plus one Hamiltonian. So they are, uh, and somebody already mentioned here, uh, at, at the talk that uh, you get, one can get Hamiltonian structures from uh, we can actually obtain Hamiltonian structures for systems of PDEs or ODEs when you uh, expand the uh, the original phase space of the system. So this is also the case in our for our systems. But for us, I would like to point just two properties. The one is the Liouville integrability. So the no matter what curve you start with, but we we start with our Steckel curve. These systems are. Uh, Commute, commute, so they are Liouville integrable. Um, and also, the system has so called isospectral or lax, lax representation. We, have, uh, we can write it down. And actually, I have many transparencies showing them, but maybe I speak them anyway. 
So these are, these are at least two properties that I would like to mention. And now, and I, uh, <laughs> this is stacker nothing new. Now new things start to happen because now our goal is to uh, somehow pass from stacker systems to, to so-called pine level type systems. Pine level type systems, where pine level systems, pine level equations have been studied for over a century. And basically in a pale, pale analysis, one take an ODE of second order, rational in, a, ah, maybe I write it down. Basically what you do in a pine level analysis, you take a, equation of this type which is analytic in x and rational so analytic in x and rational in these variables y and y prime this is a second derivative like this and you take a look at solutions and this is of course generally a nonlinear uh, system so what happens for nonlinear equations is that they are singularities the solutions have singularities that depend on initial conditions. They are movable, they move. So uh, uh, Pine Leve and others show that there is a finite number of, of, uh, uh, of uh, this type of systems for which these solutions have, uh, solu uh, uh, have uh, singularities that, that are uh, uh, at most movable poles, movable at most poles. And six of these 50, Six of the 60 were new. They were not, people could not trace it to, to more elementary functions. So these are now famous six pain level equations. And what we are now going to do, I'm going to demonstrate to you in this limited time I have that you can take, you can take Stecker systems and deform them in two steps in order to obtain pine level type systems. They will swallow all these pine level systems that we were found before, will embed them in a huge hierarchy of pine level type systems. And why we will call them pine level type systems? Well, all these pine level systems have so called isospectral lux formulation. Uh, so, this is uh, isomodromic, sorry, uh, lux representation. So, uh, the original systems, Stecker systems, have, have so called isospectral, just regular lux representation. And then after deformation, they will uh, possess isomodromic lux representation, which proves indeed they. they they, 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 it is uh, justifiable to call them pine level type. This is why we call them pine level type. And the second reason why we call these deformations of pine level type is since they uh, uh, they do swallow the classical all the classical pine level equations. I have, obviously have no time for details, but we do our we take our stecker system and we deform it uh, in two steps. But what happens now is that we cannot now keep magnetic and non-magnetic terms together. It's not possible. We can either start deforming um, stacker systems with or only with non-magnetic terms on the potential side. So we consider now two uh, families of uh, uh, so-called quasi stacker systems. So we take stacker system with only usual potentials and we deform it by a function WR. And we also do it with a uh, stacker system depending on only on magnetic momenta and we deform it by the same function wr now you see the the sets a and b they are exactly written here why such this is the most general case we cannot go beyond that otherwise uh, algebraic conditions of the play will not be satisfied so anyway these quasi steckel terms they are linear forms in tq star q induced by some vector fields so they are just contractions of momenta with vector fields and how do you find these uh, w's or do, how do you find these j's you have two aims the u j's should be taken from the killing uh, algebra of killing tensor fields uh, killing uh, vectors it should be said uh, it should be word vectors killing vectors for g and the second that these geodesic hamiltonians plus this deformation term should constitute a closed Lie algebra and then there's only one solution actually if you uh, as you if you uh, want this to be this is the solution, of course, obviously it doesn't say you very much, but if you choose J's, if you take J's in this form, so these are uh, vector fields on our configuration, configuration of manifold Q, then these DW's will be such that these conditions will be satisfied. For example, algebra of epsilons, epsilon is E plus W, 
uh, is here. And uh, again, all JRs will be killing vector fields for G. And this algebra has an abelian subalgebra. So, uh, uh, so spanned by first kappa one epsilons and the, the last n minus kappa two epsilons. And this kappa one and kappa two are defined here. Anyway, sometimes this algebra will be the whole algebra G. Sometimes it will be a subalgebra of G, depending on, on the interplay between N and N here. Why do we do this? Okay, fine. Krzysztof, because my name correctly pronounced, okay. took Stecker systems and add some stupid term. Okay, the steps have some properties, well, fine, but so what? Well, it turns out that what you can do now, you can take this deformation and take the second step, namely, you allow these constants, C alpha and D gamma, to vary, to depend on all times. You consider now non autonomous quasi stecker systems. And uh, you continue deforming in this way. So there is another step of deformation, maybe third. You deform, you deform these systems in this way. So you multiply all these H, R, A, and B. A stands for non magnetic, B for magnetic uh, uh, deformations. You, you put them here, with, uh, deform them with some functions zeta, depending on all times of the play here. And then uh, after a lot of a lot of calculations, a lot of fun, <laughs> you end up with the following theorem that these deformation thing functions zeta, c alpha, or the gamma in the magnetic case can be chosen so that these Hamiltonians, both non-magnetic separately and magnetic satisfies the Frobenius condition. So we go from a Stecker system that is completely integrable, but autonomous system, no explicit depend on time. We got a Frobenius integrable system that do depend explicitly on time and yet specify, satisfy this Frobenius condition. So they are still, it is meaningful, meaningful to put them together, consider them together because they have common solution. There are, there are integrable submanifolds passing of the system, passing through each point, so to say. Uh, I don't want to, of course, I am not able to show the proof, but one thing about the proof I want to say is that in the proof, you will see that this sets maxima sets A and B that were used to, that were not specified before, can be maximally chosen as this. And also what you can see here is that the uh, zetas here can be obtained separately by considering only geodesic stecker system. If you take a stecker system geodesic without this W term, without W term, uh, sorry, without, uh, without the potential terms, and you uh, deform them with this W term, and you demand this demanded system to be uh, Frobenius integrable, you end up with some system of PDEs for zeta that can be solved. And after that, you can find the function C alpha D gamma, or you can do it in one step. It doesn't matter because the originating PDE for C, D, C or D and zeta uh, is such that the, the PDEs for zeta create a subsystem in the system of PDEs that I didn't even bother to write here because it's quite long. Uh, anyway, uh, the proof is, uh, there in uh, one of our papers. And the result is that we got two families of time level type systems, I, I told you. They are explicitly time dependent, they explicitly um, non-autonomous, and they satisfy both systems A, that is non-magnetic, and B, that is magnetic, satisfy uh, Frobenius and And they both have the so-called isomonodromic lax representation. There's one more term here. With matrices U bar L, and you, you are bar, yes. And now I don't want to, this is an exam, geodesic example. We take N equals 11. So this is dimension of the Q of conventional space. We take M equals to six. Then kappa one is four, kappa two is three. And our Abelian algebra is spanned by the first four uh, and the last uh, three epsilons. Which epsilon is, uh, I, remember, I remind you, it's a, uh, E R, e R plus W R. And this is how it looks like. For all epsilons R that are within this range of this algebra, they, they, have it, they are not deformed. There is no deformation. But the remaining four are deformed by functions that are poly, explicitly depending on time that are polynomials in time. And one can actually verify easily by direct computation that these Hamiltonians do indeed satisfy the Frobenius condition. Okay, fine. So uh, what next? 
Next, I would like uh, to say that uh, often we do not work directly in, in uh, separation coordinates, but in coordinates that are called Vieta coordinates. And you simply take your rows, which are, I repeat, signed, signed elementary symmetric polynomials of lambda, uh, and you expand this transformation. You assume that they are your coordinates, and you expand this coordinate. You lift this coordinate. This is a point transformation. And you assume that this is a point transformation, so you easily lift it up to the tangent to the cotangent bundle. Uh, an example be before we go further, so so that you just actually see something. <laughs> this is n equals to three and m equals to one. So lambda x to m is just x. This is the Benenti part, and this is the polynomial, polynomial part. If you solve it, of course, you get here the sum of seven polynomials. Here you get a, a geodesic part. And the geodesic part uh, looks like this, in this case. The scalar potentials are some polynomials in Q. These are very concrete systems. And you can write them in any coordinate system you wish, of course. I wrote here them in Vieta coordinates. And then if you take a second step of our deformation, you, since you see that kappa 1 is 2 and n is 3, there will be the first two Hamiltonians are not deformed. The third one is deformed by a very simple function of time. And the, the corresponding function C alpha can now be determined from the previous condition. This is one particular solution. But in general, in general, each pine level system in non-magnetic representation is parameterized by two n plus two free parameters. Some of them we call non-dynamical because they, so to say, enter, they multiply the trivial potentials that are constant and do not influence the dynamic of the system. And others are dynamical. They do play a part in evolution. They, they, they uh, contribute to evolution of the system, to solutions of the system. Anyway, so this is a parameter play. There are a lot of parameters in play here. And, <laughs> If you specify parameters correctly, you get the classical pine level hierarchies that are known from literature. So by specifying uh, parameters in a correct way, you receive the Hamiltonians of uh, pine level, six pine level equations together with hierarchies that are built upon them. So this restores the classical results. Okay, I will not torture you with that. This is how they look like. This is, for example, P P4 hierarchy that we get here. And this hierarchies, <laughs> I will tell one thing anyway. What you do is you fix M. You choose app uh, appropriately the integration with these parameters A that somehow are integration constants for, for the functions C alpha that are always polynomials or polynomials or exponential functions in P. And uh, you let N vary. This is how you get the pine level hierarchy, pine level four hierarchy in our case with the first three uh, members. The first member has only one Hamiltonian. The second member has two Hamiltonians. That th for n equals to three, you get three um, pine level type systems, and so on. All of them have have uh, this um, isomorphic class representation. This P three, for example, with uh, P three already has exponentials of uh, that depend exponential. It may depend exponentially on times. And for higher m, the rated pine level hierarchies start n higher than one. And uh, they also can be written in magnetic representation. And uh, yeah, I will not torture you with uh, isospectral -like representations. I just would, would like to show you that we have a very specific, very concrete form for lux representation. This is non magnetic stecker, no transformation yet. This is stecker. We have a very, in, the, in this case, actually. We have proven that the uh, not magnetic Steckel has lax formulations uh, parameterized by arbitrary function in G. This is a very concrete recipe. You recognize here the potential that enter the, the all the terms that enter the curve that defines the non magnetic Steckel. Yes. And this plus operation is simply a generalization of, 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 a, of a, this is simply a, a polynomial part or Lorentz polynomial part of the quotient. So you divide, these are polynomials, then you take a polynomial part of the quotient. If, is, if P is a Lorentz polynomial, then this is a little bit generalized, uh, but this, this still applies. So this is what this plus means. These are some details, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that our lax matrix reconstructs our separation curve for nonlinear, uh, for, for non-magnetic stacker. I know that many of you would read it as nonlinear Schrodinger. Here it is non-magnetic stack. 
half or more, and 15 minutes more, it would cause normalized perspective. So, uh, um, also, I would like to say that these, these lax matrices, I know that so called symbols, it's difficult to read, but these lax matrices, X is now a, a, a spectral parameter, but these lax matrices are actually uh, invariant. They are true in any coordinate system. You can, you can of course, uh, U is given by this X minus lambda K. And lambda K is on to the uh, separated coordinate system for our, system, for our circular systems, but you can change it to. You can express these by in new coordinates if you wish. It's Newton coordinates or whatever. You still will have the same form, of course. Now I, I skip all the details about how this. Uh, what I want to say is only that ISO, ISO, uh, if we deform, if we deform our stecker systems through quasi stecker systems to plane level type systems, we can regain, we can anyway find. They are, we, we can show that these deformed systems, spine level type systems, have iso monodromic lax representation. Uh, so, for example, there are these non autonomous terms, they appear here in the lax matrices. They start depend explicitly on time here and here. And what is also funny here, I am not going to go through all these details, that the corresponding matrices you are are appropriate deformations of the matrices of the not magnetic Stecker with the same functions data that were used to deform Hamiltonians of Stecker system to our uh, uh, pen level type systems. So they're exactly the same functions, deforming functions. This is very beautiful, I think. It's nice that it all works. No details, as I promised, so I will not torture you with that. One information, one last information, because we start to say a few words about solitons. One last information is that. Magnetic and non-magnetic pine level systems are related by a multi-time dependent uh, canonical transformation. And this picture is also true in the, in the quantum case. We have just proven it, that there is a counterpart on the quantum side, but it's not in this talk because it would be too much. Anyway, if you consider the following generating function depending on old positions and new momenta, you can prove that this is exactly the, the uh, generating function of the canonical transformation that relates non-magnetic non -magnetic and magnetic Hamiltonian in this way. This is exactly what you would expect from a time-dependent canonical transformation. And why is it called multi-time? Because there are many times involved here. Yes. Okay. And the, this, uh, the explicit dependence of mu uh, on time is given by this gamma of t, these this, uh, uh, terms that we have in the magnetic uh, version of the system. And uh, now a few words about uh, how it connects to solid. <laughs> Zero minutes. Okay. I will use one minute, two minutes. That's enough. It's enough. Um, now, even though we are speaking about finite dimensional integrable systems, a few words about the connection of these systems to uh, solitons. So I skip the theorem. I'll show you just an example. Suppose that you take a KDV equation. Everybody knows how KDV equation looks like. This is uh, the translational symmetry of KDV. And this is integrated fifth order KDV, integrated with respect to the first Poisson structure of KDV, if you know what I'm talking about. If you consider this system, it turns out that under suitable map, which is written here, and everything is formalized in the form of a theorem, it is equivalent to our Stecker system. So we call it a in this case, second uh, second uh, stationary KDV system uh, integrated with respect to the first Poisson structure. You remember I told you that that uh, in general, Stecker systems have uh, have uh, n plus one Hamiltonian formulations if uh, if expanded by by n additional parameters in a phase space. So uh, so there is a deep connection between stationary systems of KDV type and the uh, and the uh, and the uh, and the stecker systems basically in this parameterization they are, they are the same uh, they are just written in different parameterization and the passage between the between the jet variables that contain u ux and so on the usual variables that we see in KDV systems and uh, and the the the, the coordinates is here given in this way and if you use the second Poisson structure uh, of uh, KDV, the same 
three flows. First two are the same, KDV, it's transformation and symmetry. And also the, the second, uh, the, the fifth order KDV, but integrated with respect to the second Poisson structure, P1 not P0, the equivalent to a Stecker system given by a different uh, separation curve with a different map between Z variables and, uh, and Q and P variables. So this is the last slide. I don't have thing to slide. I will say it in words. This is the last slide. So you can start to feel that the conference is almost over. But last slide, because this last slide really contains a lot of ongoing research. And uh, I am not able to go into details, but we are now working in the same, uh, for this, uh, uh, for, uh, in, on the same theorem, but for coupled KDV currently in the setting of Antonovich and Ford. In state, most papers from um, among others, communications of material physics from '89, and now, um, so this is a connection between uh, uh, stationary KDV systems and and stackers. Now, we deform stackers to to uh, plane level type systems. We believe that deforming stacker to plane level will cause deforming the stationary KDV to non autonomous stationary KDV pair. And we be believe that the same result will hold for CKDV terror. And in this way, we can, we'll get another passage from Stecker systems to, to non-autonomous soliton theories uh, through uh, the finite dimensional, through, through, through um, pine-level type systems. So for us, it's quite interesting. Uh, and you, <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it was also a little bit interesting. I want, I try to pass through a lot of things during this limited time. And I thank you for your attention. Yes, yes. I mean, of course, there's broader classes of sticker system. This is not the general. Stecker system. The Stecker system of Benenti type to begin with. So you have this polynomial, you can have different powers then. And uh, so let's go back. No. no. Uh, where it is. This is the model we work with, this one. To begin with, this is of Benenti type. You do not have, uh, uh, you do not have uh, arbitrary powers here, just the uh, you start from x min n minus one and you go to x raised to zero to, to begin with, right? At the moment, and then we made them dependent time in order to deform them to to uh, pain level type system. But in second, they are constant. But uh, if, it doesn't matter if they are constant or not. If you solve this respect to HR, they will pass on commute, of course. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Well, uh, I will be honest with you. It may be trivial because what you can do, you can, you can uh, by a simple translation of variables, you can kill, probably kill these linear terms. So probably my answer is no. It may be trivial. But uh, what, is, what is important to know that we needed the magnetic system, the magnetic form to generate this pain level, pain level uh, type characters. This is, they are crucial for us. So the goal was different. The goal was to, to go to pain level type systems. And we would not be able to obtain a lax pairs or a lax for or isomorphic lax representation for, for pine level type systems in the original without these terms. Uh, it, would, it was too difficult for us. So we had to go through this uh, theory of linear terms. It was easier to find lax pairs for them. 
And then by this multi-time canonical transformation, we moved lax, lax formulation to the non-magnetic situation. Yes. Yes, I know this is the same letter, sorry, but it's completely. Uh, well, as you see. Uh, let's say, uh, let me, uh, there is a relation in the sense that uh, this is everything part of a Stecker system theory. So these, these are Stecker systems, very concrete geometric, geometric, uh, geometric uh, uh, condition uh, properties. But uh, if you now, if I find now this here, uh, this is the lax pair before deformation. Uh, this is non, non non magnetic stecker. As you see, uh, I, I should say that this L is not the L we, we did before, of course. So uh, I cannot answer this. This is a good question. I cannot answer this at the moment. Uh, only I, I want to say that all this theory, all these coefficients, all this set A and B, everything here is really carefully chosen so that it fits together. If you start doing something to these parameters, everything will fall apart. So in this sense, uh, it must it must be as it is. So the structure of Stecker systems is such that you cannot really uh, choose L to be very free, and so this lacks lacks for operator to be very free. But answer your questions in a better way. Sorry. Yes. 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 Uh, Yes, we can. And here is P1 to P4. I didn't wrote more because they got nasty, but we can. Yes, yes, yes. We swallow all. all. We actually, we swallow all. Uh, we have swallowed all pine level uh, type systems that I, we have seen in articles. So, of course, there might be maybe we got something wrong, but we have seen. We see that our theory encompasses all pine level type systems considered in literature. As, as far as we know it, of course, we are. We all have very limited brains, <laughs> limited knowledge. So if we are wrong, we will announce it, of course. No shame about that. We swallow at least a lot of pine type systems, a lot. Yes, flat for n from zero to n. And you use your analysis Yes, yes, only. So we do not go further. Yes. And that, I mean, and even there is a yes. So the It's a good. We don't know at the moment. We don't know that. Sorry, we the analysis was limited to the case of the basis of constant curvature, unfortunately. Or, or one specific case, m equals to n plus one. We do work normally not with monomials. We work with the uh, with the uh, polynomial. Uh, we work with. I will just tell you the two. Uh, since you asked a question, I will torture people with one more information. Normally, this is the system we work with. So instead of monomial here, you get an arbitrary function of, uh, uh, you have a polynomial in lambda, but polynomial of order up to n plus one. Yes, but this can be a Laurent polyno polynomial. Uh, any any powers here are okay. They generate positive or negative basic separable potentials. Mm -hmm. 